Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk to you guys about my Ritual League Start character, the RF Inquisitor. Now I've played RF from many different build variants, going all the way from Low Life RF Guardian to Life RF Marauder, Life RF Chieftain, Mana RF Hierophant, uh, Life RF Trickster, and now we are in the era I would like to believe as Hybrid RF Inquisitor. So before we get started, let's talk about the Inquisitor changes that actually occurred as to why we are doing this. So, step one, Inquisitor has had a massive rework. So some of the stuff are still the same, like as an example, Augury is still the same. So for us as RF, enemies deal less damage to us as Elemental, which is great. And enemies take increased Elemental damage, which is also great. That just works both ways. Then on the right up here, we've got Sanctuary which essentially is the same as the previous one, except we get an extra 5% damage. It's important to note that the Inquisitor has two, let's call them monster amplifications. It's monsters take increased damage, not we deal more damage. Then you have Pious Path. Pious Path has been changed. Consecrated ground you create causes life regeneration to also require, or to, sorry, to recover energy shield. Before this was a flat 200 or 250, this makes it so we believe your life regeneration is mimicked to your energy shield. So if you have 2k life, you have 2k energy shield. If that does not work, my entire build is bricked. Let's just assume it does. I've had a lot of people tell me in quote that, the, you know, GDG said specifically, this is exactly how it works. Anyway, moving on. The Uber Lab point is pretty underwhelming. There's not really much you can get since obviously you've got Augury, you've got Sanctuary, and you've got Pious Path. So it's probably going to be Sanctuary, Pious Path, Augury, and then Righteous Providence. This essentially just gives you Strength and Int, so like 100 HP and like, I don't know, a little bit of mana, like 10%. But the one nice thing is at least it, it grants decent uptime for Ellie Overload because we're going to have about 150 to 200 Strength and vice versa, same Intelligence. So we'll get around 150% increased crit. It's really not that bad. Um, it just helps Ellie Overload, but nothing too, too, you know, crazy. So to talk about the character, let's go ahead and get started with the tree pathing. As we are playing a uh, Templar, we have very, very, very easy access to generic damage scaling in our leveling. So you level with Scorching Ray. You've got all the beautiful notes, such as just the normal Ellie damage scaling. You've got the Holy Dominion, Light of Divinity, etc. Then you can come up and grab Holy Fire. So the leveling is pretty simple. Um, vice versa, you start going across, you branch into Witch, you move across, you go into Shadow, keep going on into Shadow. Then, the part where the build gets a little interesting is when you are min-maxing your Cluster Jewels. So let's talk about that right now. You can see at the moment we're over into Breath of Flames. This is only because in the beginning of the League, literally day one, it may be difficult for you to get some of the starting Cluster Jewels, but as the League is kind of like Fleshing out, it shouldn't really be a problem. Also, I don't know what my neighbor's doing. I don't want to get DMCA'd. I'm just going to close my window. Pretty sure he's blasting Katy Perry. All right. So, let's go ahead and go back to the default tree. Now, looking at our large clusters, we've got Burning Bright. Burning Bright is one that we are stacking because it gives a large source of fire damage overtime multiplier and gives increased AoE that you normally would not have because we're not playing Hierophant for the 100% AoE. So if you just scroll out and search Burning Bright, you can see we've got six Burning Brights allocated. It's like 48% AoE. It's very nice. Since um, our Cluster Jewels aren't really rolled very intensely, all of my Cluster Jewels are literally just rolled white. They just have the notables on them. Um, the, the key for large clusters is you essentially have to roll it so that one useless modifier is in the back and the two that you want to pick are in the front. And of course, all my clusters are going to be rolled minimum value because we want to get as many notables as possible. So moving on to the medium clusters, remember the large is going to be a fire damage. The medium cluster, we're rolling fire multi so we can roll burning bright again. But next to burning bright, you can roll flow of life, which actually gives increase the maximum life. So if you have four of these, 4, 8, 12, 16, that's 16% maximum life from your medium clusters. Very nice and a good source of increase and gives you life regen. Moving on to the small clusters. Smalls are the exception. Smalls, I believe you can roll maximum value. Maximum, for those of you guys who don't know, means it has two baby travel points with a large notable. 
The reason why is small values can roll much higher than the previous ones. So if you have a properly rolled one, you could have like Chaos Res or Life on them or just something that's actually pretty good. Again, for this for this POB, everything is just white. So we take three Molten Ones Mark, which gives 6% max fire res. The other one that I have is a Baby Small with Fettle. Fettle's not going to happen. In my notes tab over here, I did put for Cluster Duels what you can use if you don't get the perfect ones. Just to confirm over here, you can see we've got Molten Ones Mark and Molten Ones Mark. So that together is 6% max fire res. In our items, you can see we have a Saffles Frame. It's only a couple chaos. Saffles Frame gives 4 max all res, so 3 of the minis, 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 on top of your 75 puts you to 85 fire res. If you have a level 23 Purity of Fire, which you can easily get, so for example, if you have an Empower linked with it, if you have plus one fire gems from your weapon, plus one fire gems from your shield, which we don't get in this, in general, acquiring a level 23 Purity of Fire is manageable. In this instance, we have plus one from our weapon, and we have plus one from our amulet. That makes plus two. 21 plus two is 23. That makes Purity of Fire give us five max fire res, which puts us to 90% fire res, which is current hard cap. So, to make proper use of this fire res, here's the next step. Since Saffles Frame is such a cheap unique, please don't do this, I want the market price to stay shit, you can actually corrupt 8% of physical from hits taken as fire, so that's 8. After the 8% of physical hits taken from fire, you can craft on a helmet for another 8. 8 and 8 is 16. On a body armor, you can roll up to 15. 15 plus 16 is 31. And then scrolling all the way down to the Watcher's Eye, this is a single, single Watcher's Eye with only physical damage from hits taken as fire, nothing else, it's just a one property. This puts you to 41%. 41% of all physical damage you take hits your fire resist, which is 90%. Now, this makes up for a lot of synergy um, that I'm not going to talk about, but there's like, I think, Tempered Flesh or a Legion Keystone you can use here. Uh, and then you can make it so your fire, so your lightning and cold gets converted to fire, but we're not talking about all that. This is a template for you to run on. Next, um, to really get the effective life going with this character, we use a keystone called Corrupted Soul. Corrupted Soul is also mandatory for my build, and I'll explain why. So normally when you run Righteous Fire, if we look in the Skills tab and just tap on Righteous Fire, you can see it does part of your maximum life and part of your energy shield burnt. Well, if you know anything about Energy Shield, Energy Shield must always protect your life pool before it goes away, unless you're converting it or doing something different or you get hit by Chaos damage. However, Corrupted Soul is unique. Corrupted Soul can be acquired with a Replica Soul Tether, which we'll be using, or a Glorious Vanity that converts uh, Agnostic that we have on our tree, which is located right here. So again, if you don't have a Soul Tether and you want to use the, G uh, the Legion Gem, you do this, which will corrupt this, 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 and this, which is okay because it's not breaking any of your notables. It's just going to reroll the baby values. This is probably the better alternative endgame, but for the sake of this video, I don't have that. So we are going to use Replica Soul Tether. Replica Soul Tether gives Corrupted Soul. Corrupted Soul states, which causes 50% of non-chaos damage taken to bypass your energy shield and grants 20% of maximum life as extra energy shield. So this 20% stacked with replica soul tether, which is 26%. Then on your body armor, you can actually craft 10%, which is 36%. So essentially we scale almost no energy shield, but have a, a decent source of energy shield, which is coming from, for the most part, the hybrid nodes in shadow. The hybrid nodes in shadow melding and written in blood both add for a awesome amount of health scaling and ES scaling along with down here resourcefulness which gives percent life even this little baby node gives flat life flat life is very good so if you like look at our ES value our ES value right now shows where is it it's like 4k right I'm drunk I can't see it ciao where did it go I lost it oh I clicked agnostic I'm stupid okay so you can see here, we have 4K ES. Removing this puts us to 3.6. Removing this puts us to 3.2. It's pretty nice. Oops. Okay. 
Next. The reason why I say Corrupted Soul is so important is because this will even split our Righteous Fire damage between our life and our ES. But the biggest thing about splitting the life between the life and the ES is that Pious Path makes it so our life regen mimics to our energy shield. So our RF is being split and all damage we take is being split, but we still gain the benefit of full energy shield, sorry, not recovery, regeneration based off of our life regen. So essentially, <clears throat> with this current setup, with not crazy min-max gear, but pretty good, we're sitting at 1300 life regen. This would also mimic to 1300 ES regen. The net regen is not correct at all. I can't really, I can't really put the path of building stuff that's not in, in here to show you. <clears throat> so then, going on with the next part, we'll just go over some gear and explain why I'm using what, and then that pretty much covers it. So you're going to be using a scepter naturally. You're going to want to use a trigger scepter. A trigger scepter means that you you essentially craft, cast trigger uh, spell on whatever, which means that you'll put like a storm brand in there, and anytime you randomly are doing actions, your storm brand will shoot out, and if you look at the skills tab, it will automatically curse with flammability, and it will proc elemental overload, and it will apply elemental equilibrium all at the same time, all happening by itself. This is one of the really, really, really nice options, which we can see Ellie Overload is here for the more damage, and Ellie Equilibrium is located down here. Remember that because of the um, Ascendancy node we get, we get a bunch of Critical Strike Chance, which should make Stormbrand feel pretty decent for actually rolling its crit chance. Okay, I want to talk about the Auras as well. So one of the big things with the Auras is I decided to go full defensive because I looked at my numbers in Path of Building, and as a guy who pretty much was playing Death South for four leagues straight, if anything breaks over 400k on a boss, I feel... Well, 400k is not that good, but I mean, this is sitting at 2 million. Of course, with all buffs ticked for the most part. But I mean, it's enough for me, and that's not including the RF. So I'm I'm fairly happy with this. Even if the damage is cut by 1 million, that's still a, a decent amount for me to clear content at until I get improvements to my gear. Also, the strength requirement is a meme. Remember, we get an extra 50 strength on the actual patch because of the Ascendancy node, and the decks you just fix with, you know, one simple dex anywhere. Okay, so going over the auras. The goal of my build when I'm fighting a boss is to stand still. Remember, when we're standing still, we're on permanent Consecrated Ground. Consecrated Ground means we're immune to all elemental ailments. Fire, shock, so burn, chill, shock, ignite. All voided, which is awesome. So, we run Arctic Armor so that while we're standing still, we've got more physical mitigation and we take less fire damage. So when the boss hits us, we have okay physical resistance, then the damage gets converted to fire, which we take less fire from, and then infused channeling also works for that, which we'll go into later. Flesh and stone, so anyone within my radius is blinded. If you're off screening me, you do reduce damage, that's how it works. If you wanna opt out for more damage, drop these two and run malevolence for 50%. Purity of fire naturally for that plus five max fire as I was talking about. And then whatever remaining mana I have left will be Vitality because it's a flat amount. Remember also, Scorching Ray's mana has been cut in more than half for this patch. So actually being able to sustain it on mana should be fine. Um, yes, it does cast faster, but it also hits its exposure limit or its maximum stages much quicker. So now that we've covered auras, let's move on to the next thing. Also, one thing to note, if you can't fit everything in right away, you can also just come down here remove a few nodes and just get Purity of Flesh and then work on Sovereignty. I will state that Corrupted Soul is kind of something that kicks in later into the build. It's not something that kicks in right away. So you could potentially play this as a pure Scorching Ray character until you're ready to run actual RF. What I mean by that is you can just play really defensive and not actually run into everything's face, right? Okay. So to go through the rest of the items real fast, again, Saffle's Frame because it's pretty cheap, easy to corrupt, and makes it so that we get four max all res. Cannot block attacks is pretty scary, but with proper physical damage reduction and physical conversion, we can survive. Our helmet, uh, minus nine fire res is something we're gonna aim for. So ideally, minus nine fire res, life roll, physical damage taken as fire. You won't have the minus nine fire res for a very long time. This is something more for end game. So just remove that one mod if you prefer. As for body armor, a pretty, pretty important part. 
Physical damage from hits taken as fire with gain 10% max life as extra energy shield. Since that bottom one is craftable, we really just have to hit proper physical damage from hits taken as fire and then a life roll and then we can craft that. You could have a different chest piece for mapping like an explosion chest. That's totally an option too. But again, not going for that right now. As for our gloves, we want to delirium craft them so that we can get 30% more damage over time. I think you can do horror for Ellie damage or is that helmet? If it's helmet, that does not work. Um, ideally just life resistance and then horror so you get like a pseudo five link RF. As for our boots, it's just life fire res movement speed. We actually don't really need much fire res because of purity of fire. I just, you know, just throwing in random gear in here. As for our amulet, you want to ar uh, allocate arsonist. Arsonist is pretty cheap. It's not that expensive to allocate. It's two verdants and an azure. Gives you fire multi, gives you fire damage, and gives you life regen. Uh, it's important to get this on a uh, a marble base because of the life regen. Then you get the 89 life, and then of course, any form of chaos res is going to be very important for this build, and plus the level of fire gems. Not mandatory, but important for min-maxing for later. Rings... Uh, these are pretty pretty crazy rings, probably won't have vermilions like this, although they could be even better. Uh, I picked vermilion base because life is king in this build. Replica soul tether, we explained you can use a glorious vanity instead. Um, I'm running a taste of hate for additional physical damage reduction. Witch fire is, I don't know if I need witch fire or not, because you technically can have curse on hit on your, um, sorry, you can have curse on hit on your brand, your brand, yeah, storm brand. Uh, but it's just an option. Otherwise, you can literally use uh, Cinder Swallow, I think works really well for this build. Cinder Swallow, did I add it? I'm not sure where it is. Oh, here it is. Cinder Swallow gives you potential life and mana, sorry, life and energy shield really on kill, which is pretty nice because you're a life and energy shield build. Otherwise, if you find out how to ignite, which I think you'd need to use a Stormfire, then you could actually make use of the damage from that. Otherwise, I've got a Quartz Flask for the dodge and uh, phasing. I've got a Quicksilver for movement speed and a Ruby to reduce the damage taken. Since we're at 90% fire res, we can actually reduce the fire damage. You can't go plus 90 max res though. Clusters, we already talked about. Watcher's Eye, I talked about. If you want an even more min max Watcher's Eye, Vitality would be sick. Flat Life Regen with Vitality because it works for your energy shield as well. Socket 10, I don't know what goes in this. You could just throw an Abyss Jewel for Onslaught on kill. This is probably where it's going to go. Uh, and then these ones we talked about. So that pretty much covers all of that. Then to go through the skills, I don't believe I talked about all of these. So Scorching Ray, I simply sorted by um, combined DPS, like what is stronger. I don't have Awakened Gems on here. These are just standard gems. Burn Damage, Efficacy, Ellie Focus. Infused Channeling is something we were talking about before. Infusion grants 10% more damage of types matching supported skill gems tags. While channeling a supported skill, take 8% less damage from hits of types matching the skill gems tags. Since, since 41% of physical damage taken is hit as fire, infused channeling also helps mitigate physical damage, which is pretty interesting. Miss talking about the other large cluster notable. No, there's only two that you use. You don't use this. You you use, I tried to explain this at the beginning. You need to force a third notable to get the two that you want in the inner ring. If you have two notables like Burning Bright and Pris Prismatic Heart, it'll put one of these two up here. So you need to have a third one to force them down here. It's kind of complicated, it's weird. The only reason we take Prismatic Heart is just because it helps with Ellie Res. Okay, going down. I've got the RF links, which is RF, Ellie Focus, Burn Damage, Efficacy. Stormbrand, which is the Stormbrand Hex Touch Flammability. This is triggered in your weapon. I've got Shield Charge with Shield Charge, Faster Attack, Fortify, Culling Strike. Uh, and then our boots are completely open. I don't believe... Actually, no, this is this is in my boots. Which means my, uh, my shield is completely open, where you can do, like, Steel Skin, Increase Duration, and then just, like, Flame Dash. Or you could, vice versa, flip it up, remove Culling Strike from Shield Charge, put Shield Charge in your actual shield for a 3-link, and then you could have two separate links where you do Flame Dash, Arcane Surge, Steel Skin, Increased Duration. And that pretty much covers that. I'm not sure on what to use for leveling in terms of, like, leveling uniques. Um, I'll have to, like, pretty much go over all of that. But 
at the moment, this is pretty much the character, and I'm pretty excited for it. It's it, I get to play with one of the new Ascendancies. I haven't really taken RF into Cluster Jewels before, so I'm pretty excited to see how this works. It's not being played as a Jug, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. Do you get exposure from anywhere? Yes. Exposure is automatically applied from our Scorching Ray. Oh, that reminds me, actually. I think I'm probably going to opt out on using a Guard skill. Instead of using a Guard, it's probably better to use Infernal Cry. Because Infernal Cry will help a lot with clearing. Uh, where basically you just... Rawr! And then the mobs explode, dealing 8% of life as fire. Which the fire scales off your LE Equilibrium. Or sorry, LE Overload. So that's probably actually what I'm going to do. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to change that. Is this damage against Shaper or a map? Um, I think map. Oh no, this is on Sirius. But this is tagged with pretty much everything. Um, this is tagged. This is tagged with LE Equilibrium. This is them on Consecrated Ground. But to be fair, they would take a little bit more because of the patch. This is tagged on with Infusion Active with Max Scorching Ray stacks with RF on. But I mean, it's not. It's not imply. It's not with flasks on though. Like, Taste of Hate doesn't give me damage. And it's not with, like, it's not tagged with Frenzy Charges. Or maybe it's, actually, I think this is tagged with Vol RF. Hold on. This is not right. I think something is a little boosted here. How do I disable this one? You're banned. That's not right. There we go. But, but, our RF also does. Wait, how do I tag regular RF, not Vol RF? I don't know how to do both of them. Anyway, it, it should be it should be a pretty okay amount of sustained damage. I'm pretty happy for it. Yep, that pretty much concludes everything. Um, if you guys couldn't tell, we kill all bandits. I'm not sure what to use for Pantheon yet. I'll be playing this build on League Start so I can cover it, explain, and talk more. Chat, you do not need to use Wave of Conviction. Scorching Ray automatically applies Fire Exposure. So you do not have to worry about that part. Anyway, I will catch you guys all later. Take care. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. You can find the Path of Building linked in the description. You can also find it linked in the comments. And if you're having trouble, you need to update your Path of Building to the latest Path of Building. Anyway, take care. Have a wonderful time. Don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day except for Sundays on twitch.tv pox. And I'll be playing on League Start on Friday. Have a wonderful time, everybody.